When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Imagine we were to put the same amount of molecules, let's say of acetate, into two different types of volumes of water. So in this case, this would be our concentrated, because we have five molecules of acetate in this much water compared to this much. So here this is our dilute because they have more water for the every molecule. So imagine we have the two different containers. You'd expect maybe to actually have the actual acid to be just as weak in both cases. Because we said with acids that weakness has to do with how much it ionizes. So the level of ionization. Level of ionization. Now you might expect both of these to have the same level of ionization because I also said last time that concentration and dilution shouldn't be confused with weak and strong acids, that the actual weak acid will be just as weak in all different concentrations. And that's almost correct, but there can be some scenarios where there's a bit of a difference, and I'll go over that why that is in a second. But imagine we have our acetate here, so our acetate, and we put our acetate into water to make acetic acid. Now we obviously have our positive and negative ions, and all of this is an equilibrium reaction. Equilibrium reaction. If you remember from a couple of modules back, or not a couple, a couple of chapters back, we talked about the Chatier's principle and said that if we have more of the reactant, so if we have more of the reactant, then the actual chemical reaction will favor the products. So if we have more of this, then we will produce more of this. So let's say, okay, let's look at those two examples. Here we have our acetate. We have a certain amount of these molecules of acetate. But we have more, we have a certain amount of water as well. Compared to the second one, we have in the second example, we have more water. So we have added more water. So we have more of the reactant here. Which means if we have more water, because it's an equilibrium reaction, what will happen is it will produce more of the product. So we have more reactant, and therefore we produce more of the product. That's just what happens in equilibriums. So even though we have the same starting amount of molecules, what will happen here is we produce more of the product, and the product happens to be these ions. So what happens if we have dilute compared to concentrated, what can happen, especially with weak acids, is there might be a small difference. So for example here, okay, we only had, we had one, two, three, four, four of them stay intact. These are intact, and one of them becomes ionized. One is ionized. But because here we have more water, and water itself is part of the actual reactants, because here we have more water, the equilibrium will shift to the right to counteract that change, and that means we produce more product, and the product is actually these ions. So what will happen is, here we have one, two, three, three which are intact, and two which have ionized. So overall, there are more ionized ones in this solution than there are in the other one. So which means this one will be give you a slight, a bit stronger. So it's more it's stronger than the other one, slightly stronger. Whereas this one's slightly weaker. And that's one of the reasons why we want to, if we test different concentrations, so we want to test different acids, we keep the same concentration. So by testing different acids, we want to make sure we keep the same concentrations. And that was one of the reasons why, because it can distort the weakness or the strength of the acid a tiny bit if we have different concentrations. And I'm mentioning all this because it says compare the relative strengths of equal concentrations. That's why we're using equal concentrations because we can only really measure the strength if we have equal concentrations of citric, acetic, and hydrochloric acid. And explain these in terms of the degree, this is supposed to be degree, of ionization of their molecules. So we have to compare the strengths of equal concentrations of citric acid, acetic acid, and hydrochloric acid, and explain that in terms of the degree of ionization of their molecules. So first I'll just tell you that acetic um, hydrochloric acid is the strongest of those three. So relative strength, which is comparing the overall strength, this is the strongest. And acetic acid here, this one is the weakest. And citric acid, which is this one here, this one is citric acid. This one is in between, so it's still weak, but not the weakest. Now, that's the first part. We've compared the relatively strengths, and we can just say, well, they're all in the same. We've tested all in the same solution. 
say in 0 0.01 molar. We still have to explain that in terms of the degree of ionization of the molecules. So we said that if hydrochloric acid is a complete ionization, so all of the actual molecules will be ionized. And this graph here is supposed to show that. So here on this end we have the concentration. So it says all of these are 0 0.01 molar concentrations of the acids. And we have the three different types of acids. The green one is hydrochloric acid, the gray one is acetic acid, and the yellow one is citric acid. What we can see here is, this is 100% here, so here is 100%. This would be 50%, and this would be 0%. So what it's saying is for hydrogen chloride, at the end, there is no more HCl left. All of it, 100% of it, is H plus Cl minus. So what that means is the actual reaction, so HCl plus H2O has gone complete to completion, so it's gone to H3O plus, which is the same as H plus, plus Cl minus. So what we have in the end is we have no more of these left, we only have the ions left, and that's shown by this graph as complete ionization, right? which means this is the strongest because com the more hydrogens we have, the stronger our acid is. So this one's the strongest. Now, if we compare the next one, so that was next one is, is acetic acid. The gray one was acetic acid. So this is the acetic acid, or another word, ethanoic acid, another systematic word for us. But here we can see that most of it is left as these these molecules CH3COOH, and only a tiny bit is actually dissociated into its ions. So what that means is overall it's weaker. So I'll, I'll write that down. So CH3 COOH plus H2O goes into an equilibrium reaction, goes into CH3 COO minus plus H3O plus. So these are, these are our ions, these two, and these are our intact molecules, our normal molecules. And this is saying that, you know, about maybe 75% of it remains as an intact molecule they have not dissociated, whereas about 25% will be found as these ion forms. And the more we find as the ion form, the stronger they are. So overall, this one is weaker than hydrochloric acid, because hydrochloric acid is 100%, whereas this one's only 25%. And then for the last one, for citric acid, citric acid formula for that is CH5OH, uh, o, and then it opens up COOH3. This is the actual formula, plus H2O, so this is his reactants. Now it's going to go into the product, and what's going to happen is, if it loses its first one, it'll be CH5OCOOH2. It means two of them are, in, two of those possible three are still as they should be. The last one will have lost the hydrogen. So then we write COO minus plus H3O plus. And these are the ions. These are the ion forms. And these are the intact molecule forms. What it's saying is half of it can be found as at C3H5O. So 50% are the intact molecules and 50% can be found as these ions, 50% are the ions. What that means is that it's weaker than hydrochloric acid, because hydrochloric acid is 100%, but it's stronger than, stronger than ethanoic acid, because ethanoic acid is 25%. And these numbers that I just gave you, 25%, 50%, these are not actually the exact numbers, but overall, just the idea, they're relatively strong. So you can just say, overall, hydrochloric acid complete associates, it does 100% associate, whereas ethanoic acid is a lot less, so it might be even less than 25% only dissociating, whereas citric acid is just more than ethanoic acid. So overall, hydrochloric acid is the strongest acid, and it is considered to be a strong acid. Citric acid is to be, still is actually a weak acid, but it's stronger than ethanoic acid, because ethanoic acid is the weakest one. And we've done that using the idea of the, of the degree of ionization. So is 100% ionized, 25, 50%, etc. So you need to know 
which ones of these are the strongest ones, and then you need to be able to explain it in terms of the degree of ionization. I hope that's useful. Thank you for watching.